Hey, Jessica. Yeah? It's the season for Butternut Squash Soup. Welcome to Crocs in the Actual Kitchen. I am Brian. I'm Jessica. Really? Butternut squash soup? Okay, now look. I know every YouTube chef and cook out there and every TV cook out there has a butternut squash soup recipe. It is like a standard rite of passage for anybody who films themselves and cooks. And I've never made one until now. So this is my recipe. I came up with it entirely on my own one evening. I was just thinking like, hey, I can put all this stuff together and I can make a pretty decent butternut squash soup. But I will say, Jessica's not a big fan of butternut squash soup or that style of soup that's, you know, sort of all like creamy and just like that. I like chunky soup. She likes chunky soups, like vegetable soup and like that kind of stuff, right? You love my onion and bean soup. That's one of her favorites. Yes. Uh, but this is my recipe for butternut squash soup. But we do at the end of the video have some solutions for those of you who like a little bit more like, you know, chew to your soup. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for that. But I think right now we should. Let's get to cooking. All right, for this recipe, you will need one large butternut squash, approximately three pounds or eight to 10 cups when cubed. You will also need one apple of the sweet variety. We are using a gala apple. You will also need one yellow onion, 10 whole cloves of garlic, a half teaspoon of thyme, a half teaspoon of sage, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and a dash of cayenne. And to round it all out, you will need two to three cups of unsweetened plant milk. We like to use almond milk. Just make sure that it is the original and not vanilla flavored. First, preheat your oven to 400 degrees, and then we can get started chopping the veggies. Behold, one half of a butternut squash. First thing you'll have to do is cut it open and scoop out all the seeds. Then you will also have to have it peeled. Now, normally you can peel it before you actually do the chopping, but it doesn't matter. You just gotta make sure that the skin on the outside is completely peeled off. Next, chop off the top and the bottom, just to make sure you don't have any of that stem. And then cut the pieces into about inch wide strips. From there, cut them into about inch size cubes. Doesn't really matter how big or small they are, you just kind of want to make them fairly consistent. Now for chopping the onion, you just want to cut it in half and remove the skin and then cut it into, once again, about inch wide strips. After that, just cut it one more time down the middle and you are good to go. And for apple slicing, I love to use this apple slicer and core. It works amazingly well. Once you've got the little pieces, just cut those in half. And once again, you've got about inch size pieces. For the garlic, I like it a little bit garlicky, but I'm using 10 whole cloves that have been peeled. And that's it for prep work. Now, on a large pan lined with silpats or parchment paper, go ahead and dump everything on. Make sure that it is all spread out in a nice even layer. So there you go, it's that simple. Now you just throw it into the oven and set it to cook for 45 minutes. There's no stirring involved, nothing. Now you're just sit and wait. Once the 45 minutes are up, go ahead and check your butternut squash and see if you can easily pierce it with a fork. These were absolutely perfect, so they were ready to come out. Look at that. That is just gorgeous. That's what you're looking for. A little bit of caramelization on the onions and the butternut squash. And you can see some of the apple pieces have been cooked very nicely. They've just released a lot of their sweetness there. This is absolutely perfect in what I'm looking for. Next, scoop everything out and get it into the blender. You actually do want to use a spatula so you can get all those pieces off the bottom and you know if they do stick, because that's where the goodness is. Now, once everything is in the blender, we can go ahead and add in all of our seasoning. And of course, we can add in our plant milk. You can use whatever kind of plant milk you like, but once again, we like to use almond milk uh, just because we just happen to like almond milk. 
So there you go, two cups of almond milk. But now it's time for Instagram versus reality. First up, Instagram. Go ahead and turn the blender on and boom, delicious soup. But as we all know, Instagram is not how things play out. So this is how it actually went when we were making this in the Vitamix. We turned it on, blitzed it a little bit, and I realized that there was not enough liquid in there to actually get it moving. And in fact, we kind of overfilled the blender here too. So, you know, maybe if you've got a smaller butternut squash, you won't really have any problems. But if you have a much, much bigger butternut squash, you might need to do this in batches. Or if you're doing this in a pot, you can just use an immersion blender as well. So I added in a whole other cup of plant milk and gave it a bit of a stir and it was still having trouble. So then I brought out the tamper to kind of move everything around. And once I got it even there, I still thought that it wasn't running enough. So I added in a half cup of water. But once everything is blended together nicely and it's to a consistency that you like, you can always add more liquid if you want it to be a little bit runnier. Uh, but once you've got it to the point that you like, you are done. You can uh, heat it up in the microwave or in a pan set to medium high, stirring frequently. Uh, or you can even put it in a refrigerator and serve it chilled. I've had it both ways and both ways are absolutely delicious. But this process took several more minutes. And as you can see, this was reality, very much not Instagram. But we had the soup ready to go and ready to eat. So there you have it. Soup. Butternut squash soup. Mm. Now, this to me is super tasty and creamy and there's a lot of great things about it. And the, the best part that I like is the fact that you can really customize this to whatever you really like. Um, you can make it a bit spicier if you want. You can add some other ingredients to it. But one of our favorite things to do when it comes to making it a little bit better for Jessica is something that I learned from STL Veg Girl when I went to a thing that she had and she cooked for a group of us. And that is adding some black rice to soups exactly like this. Now, the, the, you don't have to necessarily use black rice, but black rice really holds up well and it's good and chewy and it's just fantastic. But you can also top it with some like toasted pumpkin seeds, or uh, really anything like that. You can add in a you know a couple other like roasted vegetables or something if you have like a, a, a bag of vegetables or all sorts of stuff that you can put on top of this to give it a little bit more texture. But this- Try yourself a scoop. Mm. I do like it with the black rice. Mm -hmm. It's very nice and it looks cool. It it's just, very Halloween-y. It just adds a lovely chew. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And you can see it in there like it's mm -mm. you know, it doesn't just disappear mm -mm -mm. But this is a fantastic soup recipe. It's great for fall And as you saw there was nothing in here that was even remotely uh, Has any sodium in it whatsoever mm -hmm. There is no salt. There's no soy sauce. There's no tamari no liquid aminos nothing mm -hmm. This is purely just the flavor of all of those vegetables that have been roasted and it is absolutely fantastic Okay, I have to admit I was skeptical when Brian was like, I'm gonna make butternut squash soup because I'm like, oh, it's gonna be like baby food puree. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys, it's really good. Try it out, it's so easy. I love the idea of just using like one big sheet pan in the oven and just roasting everything, throwing it in your blender and like, yeah, it's super good. Yep. It's not, um, it's not like, I'm trying to think. It's not like something that I would, I would make in a huge, huge, huge batch. Mm -hmm. I think I would just make the batch that you made and I don't know how many servings it is, but if you check out the blog post, I'll kind of try to figure out how many servings it would be. I would say be. it's at least four. At least four, but probably six to eight maybe even, depending on how big. It's very filling. I had a bowl of this that was uh, one of our standard uh, like Pyrex bowls that holds four cups, but it was only about half full. So it only had about two cups of soup in it. I had that for lunch with a little bit of the black rice. And, and honestly, I was full for several hours and I was very surprised because it is such a filling and hearty soup that you don't think it's going to be, but then it is, it's fantastic. Yeah. 
So, so that that we're we're ended on this. You can go back <laughs> for more. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and click the bell that is right next to it so you get notified whenever we post a new video. Uh, you can also find us on social media, mainly Facebook and Instagram. And once again, I am still going live on Facebook every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. So if you can find the time zone that you're in, or if you're in a different country, you can probably figure it out online what time that actually is. But that is on our Facebook group, which is Crocs in the Kitchen, right? Yes. yes. Uh, you can also give this video a good old thumbs up. <laughs> Or you can give it a thumbs down. I don't really care. <laughs> I mean, I do care. I want the thumbs up. I want the thumbs up more than I want the thumbs down. But uh, but yes, please please give the video a like uh, and share it out to your friends if you are so inclined. But I think that's all I got. That's definitely all I got. We will see you next time on Crocs in the Kitchen. Bye. Bye. Mm. <laughs>